The Prophet ﷺ made a public announcement to the Muslims, most likely in the house of Dar al-Arqam. And he said, Allah has shown me the land that you shall emigrate to. And it is a land of date palms between two volcanic plains. According to one version, the Prophet ﷺ announced it, but he didn't know the city. Then a few days later, he said, Allah has told me it is Yathrib. In one version, he said, I thought it might be Khaybah, but it is in fact Yathrib. In another version, he said, I thought it might be, he mentioned a land in, in Yemen. But both of those places don't have volcanic mounds around them. It's only Medina that has both of these signs. So he gave them permission to emigrate. So the Muslims began emigrating by ones and twos secretly. So the first person to emigrate, it is said, was Abu Salama. And Abu Salama gathered his belongings, took his stuff, he put his wife and he had one child at the time, put them on his camel. So Abu Salama didn't do this secretly. He thought, this is my business, I can take whatever I want, right? And that's why, this was one of the reasons why people started migrating secretly, because of this story. So when he leaves, the Quraysh come and confront him with their, with their weapons. And they said, oh Abu Salama, where do you think you're going? He says, I'm going to Yathrib. What business is of yours? I have a free man, I'm allowed to go. So they said, as for you, we have no right. As for your wife, she is ours. She's a Qurashi. And we will not let you take her or her son because he is our son now. And so they forced him to leave his wife and child and they expelled him without anything. When Abu Salama's tribe found out that he had been treated this way, their jahiliyyah got the better of them as well. And they marched to the Quraysh and they said, as for the lady, she's yours. But this boy is ours. They picked up the boy to take him. And the Quraysh held on and it became a tug of war with a two-year-old until his hand was dislocated. And Umm Salama cried out that let them take the boy. So Abu Salama's tribe took the baby. Umm Salama is left with the Quraysh and Abu Salama goes to Medina. And Umm Salama is narrating the story herself. She said, for more than 16 months, every day, year and a half, I would go to al Bathha, which is the farthest place outside of Mecca that is still within view of the city, right? Crying in the desert because that's where her child and her son have, and her husband have gone, right? Until finally, some of my cousins had sympathy on me and they came and they begged the elders, what do you have to do? She's just a lady. She wants to go with her husband and child. Let her go. So after a year and a half, they let her go. She went to the tribe of her husband. And by this time as well, tempers had calmed down. So they gave back to her the boy. And so she took the boy and she just walked into the desert, putting her trust in Allah that I need to get to Medina somehow. And so she says that by the time I got to Tan'im, there I met Uthman ibn Talha coming back from one of his expeditions. Maybe he went hunting, something. And he's coming back. He sees me all alone at Tan'im. And he's not a Muslim at this time. So Uthman says, what are you doing? So she says, I'm going to my husband, Abu Salam. So he says, you're all alone. He says, I have no one. I have Allah Azza wa So Uthman says, Wallahi, this will not be. I will take you. Umm Salama says that I don't think there is any more noble gentleman amongst all of the Arabs than Uthman. He walked the entire way and he led the camel from Makkah to Medina. And he didn't say a word to me, but when it was time to stop, he would tell the camel to come down and he would go forward and turn his back on me. When I would get down, he would put me under the tree, let me sleep and he would sleep by the camel. And then in the morning, I would get back on the camel and we proceed this way all the way from Mecca to Medina until finally when I could see the houses of Yathrib basically he said your husband is over there and he then let me go on the camel this is at least a two-week journey one way on the way back he doesn't even have a camel this is Uthman ibn Talha also there's many other stories as well about this early immigration and the problems that people suffered Suhaib so al-Rumi Suhaib so decides to leave as well it looks like he tried to leave surreptitiously but eventually his news spread the militia from the Quraysh marched outside of the city and surrounded him. Suhaib was armed. He pulled out his bow and his arrow and he said, O oh people of Quraysh, I have 40 bows in my quiver. And I swear by Allah that none of you will get to me until I've used all 40. And then when you get to me, here is my sword. And I swear by Allah, nobody will be able to get me until I get to him first. Now the Quraysh didn't want Suhaib to leave, but they loved their life more than they loved Suhaib leaving. So Suhaib said, what if I were to tell you where I hid all of my wealth? Will you let me go? They said, okay, deal. So he tells them all of his wealth where it is buried. And so he literally Literally arrived in Medina with just the clothes on his back. And as soon as the Prophet ﷺ saw him, he smiled and he said, Allah has revealed in the Quran about you, Ya Suhaib. There are those who sell everything that they have, they sell themselves 
for the sake of Allah and he says, Ya Aba Yahya, that was his kunya. Jibreel has told him what Suhaib has done and so the Prophet tells him, your transaction has been successful, your transaction has been successful. When Umar decided to emigrate, Ali ibn Abi Talib narrates that I don't know of anybody who did the hijrah publicly except for Umar. Everybody was sneaking away, everybody was doing it in the middle of the night. He armed himself and wore his shield and his arrows and everything and he went to the Kaaba and did tawaf seven times and he's dressed as a traveler, he's prepared as a traveler and then he makes a public announcement. Oh people of Mecca, whoever amongst you wishes that his mother lose him tonight or that his children become orphans or that his wife becomes a widow, then know that I'm performing the hijrah and you can meet me outside of Mecca in such and such a valley. And of course, nobody took up Umar on that challenge. He chose as his companions for the journey two other Sahaba, Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'a and Sham ibn al-As, who's the brother of Amr ibn al-As. And the deal was, on such and such a day, we'll meet up at that valley outside of Mecca. And when dawn break, whoever's there will go. If you're not there, then we'll assume that you were stopped. At the appointed time, Hisham did not show up, which means that he was basically stopped and prevented. And so Ayyash and Umar were the ones who migrated to Medina. Abu Jahl and his brother were actually Ayyash's half-brother. So Ayyash and Abu Jahl and a third person all shared a mother, but different fathers. Abu Jahl and his brother traveled all the way to Medina. And they went to their half-brother Ayyash. And they said to Ayyash, Oh Ayyash, don't you know what you've done? Do you know the state of our mother after you left? She cannot eat. She cannot drink. She has made a promise to Allah that she won't taste the shade. And she's in the sun since then. And she is in such a state that lice has, full, has made her hair completely full of lice. And she cannot enjoy any food. You know, she's on the verge of death, etc, etc. She's made a promise to Allah she's going to sit in the sun until she sees her son again. And they kept on going about stories and stories until Ayyash's heart melted. And so he decided to go back with him. Umar said, oh Ayyash, they're tricking you. And then he said, if she's hungry, she can eat food. If she has lice, she can shave her hair off, right? You don't have to go back and do that for her. So Ayyash said, no, I'll be a good son. Let me go back to my mother. And I also have some money. I left it. Now that I've, everything is secure here, I can bring the money back with me. Umar said to him, if it's money, Wallahi, I'll give you all that you have. Don't go. And they kept on insisting that, no, no, come back. Your mother needs you, this and that. And so Ayyash's heart became soft for his mother. So Umar pulled him aside and said, hey, look, if you're going to go, take my camel. Because my camel is stronger and faster than theirs. And if you find any treachery, ride back immediately to Medina. And then eventually as the road goes on, they start chit-chatting. You know how it goes in the safar. You open up and they're laughing and joking. Abu Jahl then says, oh, looks like my camel is weary and tired. Why don't we just ride on yours because it is stronger. And so Ayash doesn't realize that this is a trap. So he makes the camel sit down. As soon as he do this, they jump on him. And they tie him up and they make him a prisoner. And they carry him back to Medina as a prisoner. And they march him around Makkah saying, this is how we treat our fools. So they bring Ayash back and he discovers that Hisham, the one they were supposed to meet, is also being held prisoner. So he gets thrown into the dungeon with Hisham. And the Prophet eventually migrates to Medina. His first dua Qunut was about Hisham and Amr, Ayash and all of these people. And he would say, Oh Allah, save Ayash. Oh Allah, save Salam ibn Hisham. Oh Allah, save the Mustad'afeen. Oh Allah, send your punishment upon the Quraysh. And he kept on asking the Muslims, who will volunteer to save Ayash? Until finally, Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid, Khalid ibn Al-Walid's older brother. He said, I will do it, Ya Rasulullah. And so he traveled to Mecca, entered it in the middle of the night. And Allah Azza wa Jal blessed him to basically find out where this dungeon was because it's not public knowledge. And in the middle of the night, he broke into the dungeon and he cut the bonds of Ayash and Hisham and saved and, re and, and rescued them and brought them back to Medina. And the point that we need to underscore, the Prophet was really one of the last, if not the last adult Muslim to emigrate to Medina. The only people left after the Prophet were some of the women and children, such as the family of Abu Bakr, such as Ali. Otherwise, basically all of the adults had migrated before.